Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christian Lehman Church. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. My name is Caitlin, and I'm on staff here at CLC, and we are just so excited to spend this morning uh, to worship, to fellowship, and to dive into God's Word together as a church family. Um, I just want to open up this time uh, as you're popping in, as people are coming and tuning into the service. Uh, go ahead and greet one another in the comment section. Uh, we want to know who's here um, and shower that section with so much uh, love this morning. And if you are new or visiting, uh, we want to say welcome. Um, we'd love to get to know you, uh, connect with you, kind of hear your story a little bit and see how um, you can plug into our community. And so if, if that's you, don't be shy. Uh, let us know if you're a first time guest or a visitor in the comment section or head over to christianlayman.org uh, for more information about what God is doing in our church. I do want to uh, reach out and, and say this right at the beginning. Um, I, I mean, right now I'm in, I'm in SoCal for those of you guys who don't know, I, I'm visiting my own uh, family during this time. And it's been such a blessing really such a great experience and um i was just reflecting on the the amazing fact that our church is also a family um that even though we're not always perfectly going to know how to support you or love you and we're not going to do it well all the time um, our heart is there and we want to be there for you and so if you're in our community and you're going through something you need some support um, you need prayer you need someone to talk to, fellowship, whatever it may be, we are here for you. And so please reach out to us. Let us know um, how you're doing and, and uh, we'll try and be that, uh, that community that God has called us to be for you. Um, this morning, uh, we are going to start off the morning with, again, I think the, the best way to start any morning, uh, which is worshiping our God. And... Um, there are many ways to do this. Music is not the only way, um, but it is one of my personal favorites. Um, singing and lifting up these beautiful noises to the Lord, declaring his goodness, his greatness, his power, his faithfulness over all things. I know it's been a really unexpected and challenging year. Um, yeah, when we look back at all the things that have happened in our lives, in our community, in our church, even, and in our nation this year, there are so many things that go on that list. Um, and I think when we, when we think about those things, it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to um, feel overwhelmed and just not find hope anywhere. Um, but in those moments, I feel like God reminds us time and time again, through his word, through people in our community, um, that he is faithful and he is great and mighty and he is working even if we can't see it ourselves. And so today we're going to, we're going to declare those things and we're going to sing and we're going to um, allow the greatness of our God to bring us comfort and to bring us peace and bring us hope this morning. So um, let me pray for us and, and uh, we'll get started with some musical worship. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, first and foremost, for who you are. God, sometimes we forget in the middle of the chaos that is life, uh, we forget the God that goes before us. The God that is always with us the God that is mighty and all-powerful and faithful through every generation, Lord. The God who uh, the, the loved the world so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to the cross to save us and to give us new life in him, Lord. That is an awesome God. Help us, Lord, to never forget that in whatever we're walking through. Help us to remember that beautiful truth. Lord, this morning we give you this worship. Would you be glorified? Would you be honored um, by these songs uh, as we're singing in all of our homes this morning, tuning in together? Would you be glorified? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Oh God, you are my God 
and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Sing that again. Oh God. Praise God this morning because he is a God who is mighty and able and that he has defeated death and conquered the grave. And that is our true hope this morning. So let's declare this in this place that God is mighty and able and he will never fail.
lifted up, he defeated the grave. Lifted up, he defeated the grave. Lifted up, he defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In his name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. Lifted up, defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In his name, we overcome. Sing this together. So your name is like honey on my lips. Spirits like water to my soul. Word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love.
Lord, we thank you once again for who you are. And we thank you that you are the reason that we gather on Sunday mornings, that we are in this body, that you are the thing, the reason to worship. Nothing else, Lord. Nothing else in this world is worthy of worship and honor and praise except for you. Help us to remember that, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to make every single day, every single moment of our lives an act of worship unto you. I pray, Lord, that you would be changing and moving the way that we look at our lives. We're changing and, and, and moving the ways that uh, we know to follow you. May every single action, every single decision, every single step that we take be for you and your glory, Lord, not about us. And that's a hard thing, and it's a hard prayer to ask, Lord. But we, we don't have to do it alone. Give us the strength, Lord. Give us your spirit to be able to live for you in the way that you call us to live for you. This morning, we are just yeah, so in awe of you, Lord. And we thank you for this time of worship. And we pray that you continue to be with us and speak to us as we dive into your word this morning. And see all that you have for us. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now for community life, I'd like to hand it over to Denny. Take it away, Denny. Thanks, Caitlin. Good morning, CLC. Hope you all are doing well and enjoying the beautiful sunshine as I hope uh, many of you are. Um, simply put, the mission statement here at CLC is to make disciples who love God, love people, and you guessed it, who seek to serve the world. One way that we seek to do that, uh, to love on our community, is getting to connect with you. Um, You've heard this many times and you're still gonna hear it many more. Um, <clears throat> if this is your first time joining us, we'd love to get to know you and your family. Uh, we have so many wonderful um, home groups and um, prayer groups and just so many amazing uh, connections here at CLC. So we'd love to get to know you and your family. Uh, simply reach us at www.christianlayman.org forward slash contact or email us at info at christianlayman.org. Can't wait to get to know you. If you've been with us here before and you're on this train of uh, the weekly question uh, of the week from me, um, you might be asking, why do I have a bunch of cereal boxes? No, we are currently not sponsored by Kellogg or any of these other cereal companies, but the question this week is related. So <clears throat> one of the most battle-tested questions of all time of all humanity is, when you eat cereal in the morning, if you still do, does the milk go first or does the cereal go first? In the comment section, let us know. There is no right way. Well, we'll see. Uh, now we're gonna kick it on over to our next announcement this morning. So we will be having a prayer and worship meeting, uh, worship time next Saturday at 9.30 with our very own resident prayer warrior, Pam. Um, Definitely make sure not to miss out. Lots of great music, uh, a time of fellowship, um, a time of really just kicking off the first week of March um, in a right posture of prayer. So we'd love to see you there and uh, make sure to check it out. So um, this is the, I believe, fourth week that this announcement has been around, but we are nearing our CLC fellowship hike with our own Trailmaster General, Milton and Pastor Ben. Um, join us on the 14th at 8 a.m. That's right, 8 a.m. Um, at the trail, not in your bed. Um, make sure to check out the wonderful, amazing trails that are nearby here in the East Bay. And also it's a great time to just um, see old faces, socially distanced, uh, but nonetheless in person. And uh, love to hit the trails with you then. Make sure to check it out. Lastly, um, so, one of my favorite announcements every single year is the uh, CLC Church Retreat. Usually it is at Redwood Christian Park because it will rock, uh, but this year it will still rock, but it will be online. Um, 
It will be taking place on April 17th. Uh, it will be a full day of different workshops, prayer sessions, activities, and as immersive uh, an experience as possible that can be done virtually. So hope to see you all there. Um, and yeah, it's just a great time to really come together as a church um, to really um, treat yourself again, or as they call it, retreating yourself again um, to just a great time of being around your CLC family. Uh, so we'd love to see you there. Uh, for more details, uh, more details are to come. Make sure to check out the e-news or subscribe to the e-news um, on the side panel of this uh, Facebook CLC page um, to get more information. And with that, we are wrapping up the announcements community life for this week. Uh, have a wonderful week, everyone, and uh, stay safe. And I will catch you guys all here next week. Uh, same time, same place, same puns or different. And I'll kick it on over to our very own wrestling grandmaster himself, Pastor Andrew. Take it away. Good morning, Christian Lehman Church. Um, if you if you see a, a light shining right on my face, it it could be the sun peeking through my window um, or the anointing of the Lord. Um, How is everyone doing uh, today? Well. Um, uh, people have been asking me how we're doing in our preparations for Taiwan. And so maybe I can share just a little bit of what's going on. Um, one of our projects has been to paint the house. And so I, I've been painting and painting and working and working. And there is this one last part of the house uh, that needs to be painted. Honestly, it's it's just one 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 part of a wall, but I don't have the heart to paint this wall. And uh, let me let me let me have Frank kind of explain to you why. Frank, can you show that picture? Um, so what you see there is um, our kids' height wall. Do do you have one in your your house? Uh, uh, that's what ours looks like. And um, when we moved here, our kids were these little, cute, adorable things that you could like pick up and tickle, right? I remember I always, I like in my mind, I always remember, I always remember one of my sons, I won't say who, who during that time had a belly and he was standing in on a chair in our kitchen and he was dancing. That's the only time I've ever seen them dance. Um, and, and, and now, as you can see, as you look on the height wall, um, like one of them is taller than me now, okay? Uh, you're like not hard to imagine. Okay, fine. But he's like lifting weights going like, hey dad, you know? Like this wall represents the last 10 years of life. And I'm looking at my wife and I'm thinking, where did the time go? That's what we're thinking, like, where did the time go, right? Um, I think this is my point. The days may be long, but the years sure go by quick. Life is really short. Life is really short. Do, do, you, do you believe me? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like some of you young people, you don't believe me. You're like, you don't believe me. Let's just see how this one goes for you, okay? <laughs> um, <clears throat> when I came to our church, I was like, I'm not kidding you. I was like the youngest adult, okay? Fresh out of college, okay? And then, and today I am not, okay? <clears throat> That's all I'm willing to say. When I came to our church, I was thin. I was thin. And now I am not, okay? My point is this. The days are long, but the years are short. The, the years go by fast. So now I got to say, as a Christian, I, I look at the brevity of life totally different. Okay. I look at the brevity of life, totally different. Like, like, um, a, a secular person 
would would say, um, you know, life is short, you know, so like YOLO, right? You got live each moment to the fullest, go climb that mountain, go drink that boba, go, go ask that person out, you know? Um, but, but as a Christian, I have to, we have to see life in a totally different way because uh, I believe in the Bible and I believe what it teaches. So I believe that there is a heaven and I also believe that there is a hell. And I believe because the Bible teaches this so clearly that the only way to get to heaven is through faith in Jesus. I believe in a Jesus who sacrificed himself out of self-giving love. So, so this is like, this is my core reality that life is about self-giving love. And I believe in this Jesus who was willing to, to do this. And he came back from the grave and said, go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, I believe in a God who said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. I believe in eternal reward that is far beyond anything we could ever imagine. I believe it. I believe it. And so you see, life is really short. And the stuff we do in this life matters for all of eternity. So we don't have time to waste. Life is so short. 10 years of life, gone. Just like that. And all that we do in this life matters for all of eternity. Can, can you all feel that? Are, are, you all, are you all with me today? <clears throat> so we're going through a book by David Platt called Follow Me. I have that book right here, um, right, right here. Um, now, nothing gets me going in the mission of God like reading me some David Platt, okay? David Platt um, <clears throat> is, is like, I, I call him like Francis Chan's twin brother. Like Francis can preach and David sure can write, but, but he, nothing gets us in the mission of God like, like, like David Platt. He is strong coffee. And honestly, I just feel like strong coffee is what we need, especially in the Bay Area. Now, I would totally recommend that, you know, you go on Amazon, like right now, if you want, and buy a copy for yourself and follow along. Uh, it's going to maximize our Sundays. And I, I think it's really going to stimulate uh, your, your, your spiritual growth. Better yet, I don't know if it's better yet, but it's, it's, it's also really good to get your home group following along too. Um, uh, shout out to Jared and Tiffany and Jordan's group. And I think my home group too, um, that are, are following along. So how about it? Uh, let's do this. Okay. All right. Now, so David Platt bases his entire book on two words that Jesus said to his disciples, two words that change everything for the disciples. And those two words were follow me. And, and after Jesus said those two words to them, and they responded, life was never the same for them after that. And so today I want to clarify what it meant for them to follow Jesus and what it should mean for us as well. Okay, so let's go to Matthew chapter 4. And I'm going to start uh, reading from verse 18. Okay. <clears throat> While walking by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he, Jesus, said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You, uh, Quick time out, you guys, if there's one sentence I want us to focus on today, this is it. So let me say that again. Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. 
And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and their father and followed him. Okay, that's the word of God. Okay, so Jesus meets two sets of brothers, and Jesus says to them the same thing, and they respond the same way. And he says to them that key verse, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And then both sets of brothers, they do the same thing. They leave their nets behind. Actually, not only did John and James leave the boat, but they left their father in the boat. So it's like, uh, hey, hey, James, John, hey, where are you going? Where, why are you following that man? You know, <laughs> so here's the first observation from this passage about what it means to follow Jesus. Following Jesus means you leave stuff behind, right? I mean, it's such an obvious, ob following Jesus means you leave stuff behind. Um, you guys, I, I have had this reoccurring conversation with so many Christians um, in, in the Bay Area in their 30s and 40s. And it goes like this, okay? It's like, like a, a typical question a pastor should ask is like, hey, do you remember a time in your life when you were you know, like really following hard after Jesus? And, and the response is like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like back in college. You know, like I was on fire. Um, and I'm like, what? Back, that's like 15 years ago. R really? Like what happened? You know, and it's, it's always the same response. I don't know. Like I got old. I got married. I had kids. I got a job. I got busy. I got distracted. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had that conversation. And I totally relate to that. And yet at the same time, it just, it kills me. It just crushes me. You know, it's so like, oh man, you know, maybe we have forgotten the lesson of the first disciples. Maybe we have to go back to that principle that following Jesus means we must leave stuff behind. You're like, whoa, what stuff? Like what? Like leave my family? Is that what you're saying, Pastor Andrew? Well, yes. I mean, and no. Yes and no. Um, don't, like, don't leave your kids behind. <laughs> but maybe what you leave behind is a worldly definition of their success. They, they don't have to go to Stanford. Really, they don't. <laughs> uh, so you, maybe to, to leave stuff behind means you're letting go of their achievement and you're holding on to the men and women of God they can become. Letting go of achievement, holding on to character. Some of you are like, well, are you telling me I got to leave my job, leave my nets, occupation? I, you're telling me I got to leave my job? Maybe... Uh, I'm actually kind of like in the process of leaving my job uh, to follow Jesus, you know? M maybe you got to do the same. Maybe you leave the corporate job and you work for the nonprofit ministry. You should talk to your spouse first, though, you know? Or may maybe you leave behind the promotion or the corner office. You leave it behind. No, I'm, gonna, I'm intentionally going to say no to that because I want more time for better things. Maybe you leave behind your desire for self-promotion and you do your work unto the glory of God and the good of others. But it always does mean that you're leaving stuff behind. I mean, right? So, so you see, when Jesus says, follow me, it, it entails the the first word that he spoke at the inauguration of his public ministry. You know what the, when, when Jesus uh, came into the limelight spotlight and you know, what his first word word uh, in public was um, in the book of Matthew, 
It's a very unpopular word. I mean, modern people don't like it. People don't like this word. But the very first word out of the mouth of Jesus was repent. Now, repent means leave your former way of life and step into a whole new life and a whole new identity. Leave your nets. Leave your father in the boat. Leave your sin. Leave your worldly definition of success. Leave it behind. Leave it behind, right? Leave your wanting approval from other people. Leave your anxiety. Leave your porn. Leave your ego behind. You don't need that. You know, for me, Raina recently asked me to um, leave half of my books because it's too expensive to ship them to, to Taiwan. So like even this past week, it's like, Andrew, leave your books, you know, leave your old identity as a pastor. And it's, it's been really hard for me. It hasn't been easy. Like I, I, have, I have these tendencies to want to hold on. I want comfort. I want certainty, you know, which kind of leads us to this next question, which is why? People go, look, look, Pastor Ant. I mean, it's not actually me that's saying that you need to leave stuff. It's Jesus. Like, look, Jesus, I don't want to leave stuff behind. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, I, I like my old life. I like my comfort. I like my certainty. I like my stuff. I don't, I don't want to leave my father in the boat. I don't want to leave my nets. I like my stuff. Why, why would I give that up? All right, here's my, I think that's a fair question. Here's, here's my best answer for you from this text, okay? Here it is. You ready for this? It's really the big point I'm making today. Why, why should you leave stuff behind? Because Jesus and his mission are worth giving everything up for. I'm saying that from the bottom of my heart. Jesus and his mission are worth giving everything up for, okay? Now, let's unpack this one by one, right? First, Jesus is worth giving everything up for. Jesus says, follow me, okay? Here's the question. Have you ever stopped to think about who this me is? Um. Yeah, let's use this example. Let's say I came to your house. I rang your doorbell, you know, your doorbell. Uh, I ring your door, doorbell and, and, then, and then you answer the door. And I say to you, I look into your eyes and go say to you, follow me. This is me, Pastor Andrew's name. Follow me. Okay, what would you say? You would say, where? You know, why? What do you, what do you want? You know? Follow Emmy, Emmy. I hope Emmy is listening. Emmy, follow me. Um, let me go ask my mom first. You know, sorry, I have plans to play Fortnite. You know, uh, no, right? Yan, follow me. You know, and Yan looks me up and down. Is like, no, 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 thanks. You know, I mean, my point is the me of who is saying follow me really matters. That's my point. Jesus says, follow me. Okay, well, 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 who is this me that's asking us to follow him? Is this me worth following? That's, that's, that's a legitimate uh, question. But now let me give you a little bit of explanation as to why Peter just like dropped his nets and just started following Jesus, okay? There is a story, you find this in Luke, okay? What happened on that day is that Peter, well, not on that day, but Peter all his life has been a fisherman, okay? Fish. Fish, fish of the seas, knows, knows fish, loves fish. You know, he's all about fish, right? He, and every fisherman, this is what Calvin tells me, has the same dream. The dream of catching the mother load. It's the dream, you know? So, so Peter finishes fishes all night and gets skunked. You know, doesn't catch a thing. So he's like, you know, feeling kind of discouraged, kind of defeated. He's washing his nets. He's putting the nets away, you know, and then boom, Jesus steps onto his boat. 
And then, and then a little while later, Jesus says, hey, Peter, cast out your net. Peter's like, <laughs> you know, uh, it's not the time of day. This is not where the fish are at. And I just spent a whole night fishing. But he's like, but because you say so, I'll do it. Cast out his net. Brings in the biggest mother load of fish he has ever seen. Okay. Now at that moment, he has a glimpse of the glory of this man. And at that moment, he's like, who? cares about the fish <laughs> you know he falls at the feet of jesus and he's worshiping jesus let me say it again when jesus says follow me who is this me again that we are following he is the son of god 100 human being 100 god I remember a time when the disciples were terrified by a storm, just terrified. And Jesus walks up to the storm and says, hush, storm calms down. And now the disciples are terrified of Jesus. You know, who is this me we are following? The song we just sang with Caitlin, like when Jesus came back to life after death, he didn't just come back to life, but he is the one who defeated death itself. He conquered the greatest enemy of humankind, death itself. Who is this me we are following? What I'm trying to say is this. He is worthy of leaving everything behind for. He is worthy of leaving everything behind for. Okay. Okay. And not only is he worthy of leaving everything behind for, but his mission is also worthy of leaving everything behind for. Not just him, but also his mission. Now, look at what he said to his disciples. He said, follow me and what? and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So what does that mean? It means you come follow me, and I will give you a new purpose for your life. Your life will never be boring. It will be brimming with meaning and joy at every corner. You have a new purpose. So leave the old purpose behind, like catching fish, not worthy of your time. Come on, I got a new purpose for you. One that you would be willing to live for, one that you'd be willing to die for. And that purpose is to make disciples, spread the gospel all over the world, teach people to become disciples of Jesus, disciples who love God, Disciples who have compassion on those who are neglected. Disciples who celebrate the gospel in the very heart of their marriage and parenting. Disciples who love their parents. Disciples who fight for good in the world. Disciples who speak out against racism and injustice and fight for what's right. Disciples that go on to make more disciples. Here is Jesus at the very beginning saying, this is where it's all going for you. Now, it's right here in the beginning when Jesus calls Peter and, and James and John and Andrew. It, but you know, it's right there at the end too, during his last ministry with them. You see, right after Jesus dies and rises again, his parting words were this. Now go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all I have commanded you. It's right there at the beginning. It's right there at the end. It is that important. Hey, team, we have a mission. We have a new purpose. This is something worth waking up for. This is something worth living for. You know, this is actually something worth dying for. This is my entire message for today. Life is short. We don't have time to waste. 
Do you all know who this man is? Frank, can you show the picture of, of this man right here? You all know him. Um, his name is John Allen Chow. He's, a, he's 26 years old, Asian American, uh, and he used to live on the West Coast. Not long ago, he set off with a group of fishermen. He kind of like uh, paid them. It was a little bit illegal, at least a little bit illegal. Uh, and he paid them to take him to the North Sentinel Island, which is in India. We, and, uh, and this island, North Sentinel Island, is home to one of the last hunter and gatherer societies. So they're like kind of like trapped in time, you know. Now, he wrote to his parents that he wanted to declare Jesus to the tribe's people and that they should not be angry at them or at God if he got killed doing so. The island is home to uh, yeah, a tribe. It's like 30,000 year old history and they've been known to aggressively resist outsiders, okay? So John repeatedly tried to contact the tribe's people and he finally managed to reach the island. And so he, he you know, he's trying to give them gifts of like fish and a football. And so he writes this to his mom. He goes, I heard the whoops and the shouts from the hunt. He wrote, I, I made sure to stay out of arrow range, but unfortunately that meant I was also out of good hearing range too. So I got a little closer and there was about six of them from what I could see and they were like yelling at me. And so I tried to like parrot back their words to them and then they burst out laughing uh, most of the time. So they were, you know, probably saying bad words or insulting me. And I hollered, I said, my name is John. I love you. And Jesus loves you. He, he, he wrote, I, I regret I began to panic slightly as I saw them string arrows in their bows. So I picked up the fish <laughs> and I threw it towards them. They kept coming. <clears throat> he wrote, I paddled like I have never paddled in my life back to the boat. I felt some fear, but mainly was disappointed. They, they didn't accept me right away. He said, one of the tribes people, a kid, probably like 10 years old or so, maybe a teenager, he fired an arrow that struck my Bible. So the next day, as he prepared to make another approach, John Chow wrote a letter to his parents and said, you guys might think I'm crazy in all this, but I think it's worth it to declare Jesus to these people. Now, what, what happened the following day, we don't exactly know what happened. We know that John Chow was shot with uh, arrows. We know that he was killed. We know that the tribes people buried him. But we don't know exactly what happened. But we do know what he was thinking the day before he was killed. He wrote this to his parents. He said, please do not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. Rather, please live your lives in obedience to whatever he has called you to. And I'll see you again when you pass through the veil. He wrote, this is not a pointless thing. The eternal lives of this tribe is at hand, and I can't wait to see them around the throne of God, worshiping in their own language, as Revelation 7, 9 to 10 states. And then he signed off, soli deo gloria, which means glory to God alone. <clears throat> now, um, church family, can I ask you something honestly? It, it, here's my honest question, okay? 
is there a part of you that you know you hear the story of John Chow and you feel like he's a little bit crazy? <laughs> you know, I, I was reading these news media reports and they thought that John Chow was crazy. They did, or unbalanced, you know, like so. But think about this. Here are the sentinel people who have never had the chance to hear the good news about Jesus, that he loves them, that he died for their sins, that there is a way to be united with God for eternity. And so John Chow gave up his life trying to reach them. By the way, there are people right here in the Bay Area also who have never heard. Back to my question, do you think John Chow was crazy? You see, it seems to me that if we really believe that life is short and heaven and hell are real and Jesus is the only way, that to not go spend your life doing what John Chow did is more crazy. To not make this your passion and your purpose to go and make disciples, that is crazy. That is crazy. Am I right? Am I right? Who, who's crazy? John Chow for doing what he did or Christians who believe what they believe and do not share his passion or purpose. Let me give you another example. Uh, we have a home group leader in our church who is, you know, investing himself and in making disciples uh, through his home group. And when he heard that the elderly in Chinatown were being literally shoved to death, he spent that very Saturday walking around Chinatown, just making sure everyone's okay. You know, he's like, man, if I saw violence, I'm not really sure what I would do, but I knew I had to be there. Okay. Now, honestly, you hear that, so you're like, oh, wow, that's a little bit out there. It's a little bit out there. Right. But if we truly believe what we believe, which is more out there? To do something like that or to not even care? We have a mission of making disciples right here in the Bay Area, of making disciples who love God, love others, serve the world. Is that your passion and purpose? Or are you living for lesser things? During this series, we want to give urgency and clarity to this mission. You know why? Because life is short and we don't have time to waste. Jesus and his mission are worthy. Okay, quick challenge, and then we're out, okay? Did you all know we're in Lent? Okay, here's the challenge. The challenge for you all is leave behind one thing and pick up one thing new. Okay, let me explain this. Okay, during this Lenten season, we want to challenge you to leave behind something. What's that thing? Maybe it's sin. Maybe it's an area of sin. Maybe it's a bad habit. Maybe it's, it's something from your old life. And during this season, we want to challenge you. We want to invite you to leave it behind. Just, just walk away. Leave it behind. What is that one thing? I don't know. Pray about it. Ask the Lord. He will show you. But listen, it's not just about leaving one thing behind. It's also about picking up one thing that will help you know Jesus more and grow towards his mission. Maybe that one thing you pick up is more about knowing Jesus more. Maybe the one thing you pick up is more about, you know, uh, becoming a fisher of men. It's up to you and the Lord, but that's the challenge. Leave one thing behind, pick up one thing that'll help you grow closer to Jesus and his mission. Leave one thing behind, pick one thing that's new. What will it be? All right, church family, I love you all. Life is short. Jesus and his mission are worthy of leaving everything behind for. We don't have time to waste. God bless you all. Thanks, Pastor Andrew, for that.
powerful message. Um, Church, we're going to continue to respond with one more song of worship, but I invite you to just reflect on those last words that he gave us and even that challenge. Maybe uh, maybe you haven't you know, thought of something to give up and, and pick up, but I invite you to, to do that, um, not just for the sake of doing it, but for the joy of following Christ in that. Uh, let's, let's sing the song. Would you receive this benediction this morning from the book of Hebrews? May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, 
the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for joining us once again this Sunday. Uh, just a few quick announcements before we close. Um, if you have prayer requests, things that, you know, uh, just are weighing on your heart or things that you're walking through that you would like to receive prayer uh, for, our prayer team is available all week, um, just a phone call away. So if that's you, please send your prayer request into prayer at christianlayman.org and someone will contact you and pray with you this week. Also, if you have any financial gifts or offerings, uh, please make those online at christianlayman.org slash give and everything is on there. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, we also have our weekly uh, virtual social hall happening right after service. Um, the Zoom link and the ID are, and password are up and in the comment section should be a link for easier access. But we'd love to see you there and just chat about um, how you're doing and even maybe about the message and, and the things that God has been stirring up inside of you. Last announcement, basic youth, we do have service at 12 o'clock. So uh, grab your lunch really quick, uh, look for your uh, link in your email and we'll see you at 12 o'clock, um, 12 o'clock sharp. So it'll be a good time. That's all we have for this Sunday. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, we'll be here same time, same place next Sunday. And we just pray that you have a blessed week this week. Bye.